All right, so oil pump removal and installation on these engines is actually very, very simple. I'm sure you're already in here and you have the engine torn apart like you see here. You're probably in here doing timing chains, tensioners, phasers, you know, on the trucks. And you're probably in here swapping out a water pump like we are on the transversely mounted engines, okay? So once you have all those timing components off and you're ready to go and you have the whole entire engine all cleaned up, you're ready past the cleanup phase on here and you're ready to go back together, that's when you wanna go ahead and start swapping out the oil pump. So the oil pump's down there. All right, you see it better through the wheel well opening here. So it's really, really simple actually, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do, because it's all open in here, look at this, it's really easy, is we're gonna remove the two bolts for the pickup, okay? They're eight millimeter. We're gonna unscrew those and we're gonna kind of pry the pickup away, make sure you break the bond on it, okay? And then there's three bolts holding the oil pump to the block, all right? Go ahead and pull our sprocket off, all right? Put it to the side, unbolt the pump, and it slides right off of there, all right? So we'll go ahead and do that, and I'll show you how to mate it back up on there so it sits flush and it actually splines with the crankshaft, okay? That's the important part. Let's go ahead and get it done. All right, let's go ahead and unbolt it. It's really nice on these ones. You can get to these lower pickup bolts, no sweat. Could probably even fit a power tool in here to zing them off too. Now that they're loose. Make sure you don't drop it in the pan. So let's get these bolts out of the way, like I said, and we'll break the bond down here. The O-ring's gonna be sticking a little bit. Bolts are pretty freaking long, huh? All right, get that out of there. Let's see if I can get this one started. Helps get it out of there. Things are super long. One nice part is if you do drop the bolt, I mean, the pan's like right there. The baffles are higher up in the pan, uh, so you can see what's going on underneath it and get a magnet and pull it out of there. All right, now with the two pickup bolts removed, it's best to, you know, kind of pry down a little bit like that on the pickup, okay? You see it like that right there. And then you can go ahead and pull the O-ring off of here your cat claw. Get the old O-ring off of there. It's a little hard doing one-handed. I don't want to block your view though. Go ahead and get that off of there. Wipe it off. And let's get that off to the side and we can start going after the other bolts on the pump itself. So like I said, there's three bolts. One, two, and three over here. bolts should be the same length. All right. And yep, they're all the same length. At this point, the pump is ready to come out, okay? You can see it's flopping around in here. We're unbolted, there's no gasket on the backside, nothing to worry about. You simply need to wiggle it past the keyway on the crank and get it out of there. Have a rag ready, it's gonna drip oil all over the place. All right, do some quick cleanup on the block side here. Clean the crankshaft a little bit. Shouldn't be that dirty, especially if you maintain your oil. You have better access to get to all these parts of the casting here and stuff like that with the pump gone, so it's a good time to clean really well in here. And of course, clean your pickup on here. All right. And that's about it. It's ready to go back together at this point. 
All right, so here is the high volume oil pump from Melling, the M390HV. And you can see it's, it's extra thick. And that's how they get the extra high volume coming out of here, that 20% higher volume. Then they have a bigger rotor inside of here actually pushing the oil through and pressurizing it, okay? So these come complete, they're good to go. They come with a new O-ring for the pickup, as you see here. And they also come with a stock pressure spring in the box. The one that's installed in here right now is the high pressure spring, which you don't want for a stock application. So uh, there's a 10 millimeter hex on the bottom here. I recommend keeping it flat like this and a non-marring surface, put some weight on it, lean on it a little bit, and then you can brake torque on it. You wanna brake torque like this. So fit a 10 mil, here fit a 10 mil um, socket into here, an uh, Allen socket, hex socket, and you're simply gonna lean down and brake torque on it, okay? I think this one, I already broke torque on it. We'll go ahead and loosen it. Now while you're loosening it, remember, this is the end cap and that springs inside of here under pressure, okay? The, the high pressure spring. So you wanna kinda just hold on to the pump, put your finger on your thumb on the end and keep pressure this way. So when it pops, it doesn't go flying at our faces. Shouldn't be too bad. So that's the blue high pressure spring, okay, which is the optional high pressure spring, okay, uh, for um, high pressure applications, all right? So we're simply gonna take it out of there, like that, just kind of twist it out, and we're gonna take the new one, which of course is shorter, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna twist it onto there until it kind of like walks itself onto there, okay? Just like that, perfect in line, all right? So we'll go ahead and we'll install it back into there, same way we came out. Kind of twist a little bit, get it in there, should go right in without fighting it. The cap has, of course, no O-ring or gasket on it. I mean, it's inside the engine. If it leaks, it leaks. Um, it's not a big deal. So they don't gasket it. Now, putting this back in can be a little bit of a pain, okay? You want to push in, start the threads, and get it going, but not cross-thread it. So again, I hold on to the pump, use my thumb, and I press in while I concentrate on ratcheting it. And like I said, it's not so bad. You just want to make sure you're not cross-threading it. Okay, so at this point, I know we're threading in, we're not cross-threading, okay? and we're good to go. And then we're just gonna tighten this down. I believe the torque spec on here is 26 to 33 foot pounds. Let's go ahead and just snug it down and I'll bust the torque wrench out. And all these instructions come with the kit for the relief spring on there. It's a real simple change out, but you wanna return it to stock pressure, all right? High volume, stock pressure now. At this point, what you wanna do is get some oil, pour it down into this port right here, and then take your fingers inside here on the rotor part and spin it. Pour into there and spin it. And you get it fully oiled up inside of there, all right? At that point, it's good to go, and it's ready to put onto the vehicle. All right, now going back together, it's very simple. We have all our different surfaces inside here clean, uh, including our pickup. Brand new O-ring that comes with the kit, okay? Go ahead and get it all the way on there, all the way to the bottom, and we'll just kind of put that pickup off to the side. All right, so installing this pump, we need to line up a few different items on the pump with the crankshaft, okay? So you see right here, there's that little notch cut out in the rotor, okay? That needs to line up with the locating nub right here on the crankshaft, okay? You'll see the little nub sticking out right here, all right? And that's gonna help us get past that. Then after that, when we get to further on the crankshaft, there's a flats, there's a, there's a flat on each side, okay? They're 180 from each other, all right? And we need to line up those flats with the flats inside of here. See how it's flat right here? Try to get you guys a better picture. There we go. See how it's flat right there? And there's one on the other side, 
all right? That they need to line up with that, and that's how the crankshaft splines with the pump, all right? So, you just need to take your time and get it onto there. It may start leaking oil a little bit, no big deal. There's quite a bit of room in here, though, to move around to get all this stuff lined up. So, of course, we're past the little nub at this point, and we need to line up with the two flats on the crankshaft. You can see it's not going back all the way to the block. So you may need to bring it out, turn a little bit, and line it up. And move it around a little bit. And even that right there, we went, fell back a little bit like that. We're not far enough back onto the crankshaft just yet. Okay, we might want to be touching the block. All right, so going back in, we're going to first get it past the nub on the crankshaft there. Okay, we're past that. And now we're going to try and line up the flats on the pump rotor with the flats on the crankshaft. So you can see we're pretty far back on there, but of course we're not all the way back on the crankshaft yet. And we're definitely not flush with the block yet. So you see it kind of work it around and try to get lined up on there. I mean, you're doing this blind basically. But it's not too bad. So you just need to kind of... Look at it, and you can see they're at an angle, one there, one there. We're going to try to get the flats on the pump in that same position. So then when we start trying to line it up on here, you can find the flats. You want to do it nice and even like this, like that. And see how it finally fell all the way back like that? If we look at it from the top here, we can see it's flush with the block, okay? On both sides, everything's good to go. We're all the way back, all right? And then, of course, we can start lining up our bolts and start bolting it in. One down here. And there's one right here. Now at first, we'll make sure, again, that the pump is flush with the block back here on both sides. We're good to go. And then I like to center it in the bolt holes. And we'll start snugging these down a little bit. Now the torque specs on these bolts and the pickup bolts is 89 inch pounds. Let's go ahead and torque them down. Make sure you have a good torque wrench for this. And there's no particular order. I mean, it's a big enough casting on here that Ford has no particular order for torquing these down. Once they're torqued, I like to go over them once again and make sure they're good to go still. All right, those are good. Go ahead and put our sprocket back on. There we go. And then we can start working on the bolts for the pickup. Now the pickup bolts, they're gonna be a little bit more difficult. It's nothing too bad. Once you get one of them in, and again, you wanna do this by hand, spin them up on there. It should spin in fairly easy. Once you get one in there, we know our O-ring's on there, and that's all good to go. It'll kind of hold the whole thing for us. So again, you just want to tighten it by hand like that. All right. So that's loose a little bit still, and you can go ahead and work the other one in. The one that's back here, it's a little bit harder to get to. It's already basically lined up at this point.
So once you get them spun in by hand and they're close like this, you of course want to tighten them evenly. Just like that. Nice good seal on there that way. And that's the same thing, 89 inch pounds on these lower bolts here. Good to go. So the pump's back on, all three bolts are torqued to 89 inch pounds. Our two pickup bolts and the O-ring are back on, 89 inch pounds. And we have our crankshaft sprocket back on and locked into the keyway here, ready to go back together. And that's all there is to install a pump on one of these.